Yo, I ain't here for the money, I ain't here for the fame. Though it might be nice to own a jet plane, I'ma do it all for you. Yo, what's going on, guys, and welcome to Car Mechanic Simulator 2018. And this here is my garage. As you can see, I'm level one, just starting off, and I'm gonna try to teach some of you people that don't know anything about cars teach them a little something something that they might be able to fix small small problems like maybe change a wheel or maybe like fix a little noise in the car that annoys them or make them be able to just fix little things I hope I can teach you something something just something little thing now this is an engine stand if you if you're gonna fix little things you absolutely don't need this and also I want to make raise a little bit of yeah, kind of awareness like as to where people don't get ripped off at a local garage or whatever I, I hear it happen way way too many times and like this way I want to show them or show you if you're one of those people that think they're getting ripped off show them what are the pricings or how much effort is going into a certain job then you can kind of estimate like how many hours and what's the hourly times the hourly rate and then you can like check how much you get ripped off or not or not at all so let's get right into things go to the phone I got I got two jobs lined lined up here. I got a year and a half ago bought the car for my son. He said that he's not interested in anything except driving it. Occasionally filling it up at the gas station. Please check the oil and the tires. Sounds like a simple job. Anyone can do this. Okay, so now first off, the car is here. So as a garage owner, I got a lift there. What you can do to do it yourself, I'll tell you right now. Just grab any kind of drain pan or like a bucket, small bucket. Lay it down under the car. If you got a jack, most people do it comes in the car you can mostly find it in the trunk right about there there's a little hole you can open up or on that side and it got a jack stowed away if not there's one with your spare wheel which is mostly under here so getting right into things I'm gonna lift up the car lift it up a little and then all the way up all the way up okay what you're looking for is this little nut right here like right above right above it I'm gonna try and zoom into it can't zoom in any more this one right here this is the plug that stops your oil from flowing out. It's also the place where all the mechanics drain your oil. I'm going to show you right now. Okay, so move equipment, put it under the car. Now just imagine that the car is on the floor and this is like your little catch bucket. It's not a whole lot, but do keep in mind it might be like two three 
liters ish. So this is the plug, and I'm going to show you what's going to happen when I use the equipment. Look, there comes the oil. The oil drain, move equipment, put it back where I got it from, it places it right there, right back there. What I'm going to do is replace the oil filter, so take it out. You can mostly just screw it out. And it's highly recommended to, when you change the oil, also replace the filter. You can leave it in if you want to, but if you don't, it's best if you just replace it. 25 bucks for an oil filter is kind of expensive if you ask me, but can also say it's high quality I don't know. but 25 bucks for an oil, oil filter so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place it right in mount it right back where I got it from As you see the oil one was pretty good to begin with but better safe than sorry and just go for it so as I'm as I got it up, yeah, he wants new tires and an air filter. Okay. Uh, standard tire B was it? The tire market standard tire B B. Four of those. That's a total of five hundred sixty-eight. That's expensive. That's expensive. You sure? All right. Four of those. All right, now I'm gonna take off the wheels. You take off this cap. That's mostly the hub cap. This, this car has rims, so it's not an issue. But some cars have hubcaps that really, really are annoying. The one that clamp, one that clamp in your wheel. Now you see rust on here. This kind of rust is not really a big deal. If you break just once, then this all is gone. But I've I've seen examples of rusty discs and I was like ah, I would have replaced it right away wouldn't even doubt it wouldn't even call the customer it needs replacing so I'm taking while I take off the wheels uh, I want to tell you a little thing about the way I'm, I'm working here I'm taking off the wheels first and I'm gonna take the tires off the rims and that's a pretty tedious part I'm gonna do one wheel together and skip the rest just so you know what happens when you get a wheel when you get a new tire when you get a new wheel whatever always happens all right separate parts separate one set and the mechanic rips both of these apart mostly first lets out the air then presses the inside ring of the of the tire inside of the rim so this little sharp thing goes over the edge of the rim Presses one of the pedals. This one gets pressed by a press, and it pushes this inside ring here back into the rim. Then you can put one side over uh, over this part, and you can spin it so it comes out. 
then you do it again for this for the other side but that side's already loose because you got this one up so you can just lift it easily and then you can do the same process again and you take off the whole tire I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna install I got one rim one tire and we do the same process all over again but this time we go the other way normally it would turn that way then we inflate it mostly they most of the times they pop they just pop into place when you inflate it about four bars that's I don't know how many PS9. Then we're gonna balance the wheel. Now this machine, as you can see, it spins the wheel and it, it checks for any inconsistencies in the wheel when any vibrations or whatever. Then on this screen it shows you where to put the little LEDs. You might have seen them with light metal wheels. I like to use the sticky ones that go on the inside so you don't see them. But on the normal steel ones, the black ones, the ones that sometimes come originally, lately all the cars come with light metal. But the ugly ones, you know, the, the, the closed ones with the little round holes in it, all around those ones they get let's see are they here are they here no these are the sticky ones but there are also the ones that you can hook into the side here and then give it a little love tap with a hammer small hammer and then that way this monitor shows you exactly where <clears throat> so you take off the cap and then you can spin this by hand and it shows you like a dot or a stripe or a point or an arrow exactly where you are on the wheel then in there's a little gauge here and it's red and the arrow would be red when you spin it and then when you get to the certain point one of the the little platforms on the gauge would become red and the arrow would be green then you know on which side in or out in or out you have to put the little lead thingy so I'm gonna take this off and let me get cracking on the rest Okay, so as you can see, I've already mounted three of the wheels. And now it's time for the last one, and I'm going to do that one together, because there is a little trick to this. Well, it's not really a trick, it's something you should, should do, because otherwise your wheel can break or bend. or It's not going to be nice when you don't. The risk is... Not really big, but the risk is there, so it's better to just do it like this. Okay, so when you put your wheel on, and you're going to tighten the bolts, you you cross the when the way you tighten them. It's not like you go like one, two, three, four, five. No, you go one, two, three four and five like this one two three four and five that way you spread the tension all over the wheel and it'll even out any anyway. anyway that's so much for the lower side of this car now we're going for the air filter which is also a quite simple process the air filter is like in a big box normally right here mostly mounted around the sides of your engine bay 
sometimes on this side, sometimes on that side, but mostly it's mounted around the sides here, behind the headlights. This side is mostly reserved for the battery and uh, the brake pump, well not the pump but the reservoir or the winch window washer fluids. Okay, so it looks a bit like this. There are four clips, or three, depending on the size of car you got. You just flip open the clips, flip them open, take off the cover, and there's your air filter. Take out the air filter, you can just grab it, pull it out. I'm gonna buy a new one real quick for now buy a, re a new one real quick air filter eleven dollars it's not too expensive part mount you just drop the new one in mostly it only fits on in one way so no issues there and the clips don't forget the clips else it can take in bad air and your engine does not like that and the last one clip closed up and it's done so that's how it works it's a little simple don't ever, ever forget, after you drain the oil, put no new oil in before you start. Otherwise you won't, won't be happy. A little bit for good measure and done. Fuel filter. Oh god. Fuel filter. Uh, fuel. Fuel. Filter. 30 bucks. That's really, really expensive. Alright, the fuel filter. Not telling you it's always there. I'm not telling you that. Mostly it's somewhere along the car or in the in the fuel tank. Most of the times it's <coughs> uh, let me enter examine mode. Examine mode, examine mode. Oh shit. I took off. Assemble. Put the door in. Don't touch the door. Put the window back. Yeah. Uh, examine mode, examine mode. Like, here's the, the fuel tank, this one. And this is the fuel pump. And most of the times, the, the filter is already connected inside the tank or outside the tank along the fuel line somewhere going up to the engine now best case scenario is once in 20 years you have to replace this worst case scenario I've seen car 10 years old been well inside for about Three years, never left, never left the place, and yeah, then the fuel just—it gets hard, it gets sloppy, it gets gross, it gets sticky, it gets stuck in the filter, and you have to replace it. 
there's no way you can open it to drain it just replace it all right so that's one job done and I got a little bonus wait I lost three bucks on that motherfucker motherfucker wait did I start off with four or with or with five oh well next job poor break performance well it's the only one I got so let's go it's the only one I got for now oh god what have you done to your car poor thing I wish I could rescue you but sorry so did he include the list yeah brake pads and two brake discs all right I'm gonna order that <clears throat> I'm gonna buy that brake uh, brake pads and two discs now the way this person wants it is well, I'll, I'll get to that I'll get to that okay move the car to the lift get it up move it up move it up go up 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 and away alright so take off the wheels you know the drill I'm guessing it's the front this is the lucky guess I don't think so well the pads mostly when there's pads involved it's 90% sure it's the front alright so the way this one goes I mean pads in the front sure you don't have to replace your disc but when you replace your disc please be sure to replace your pads always replace your pads now this is a game so I'm not doing it crossing so because nothing happens also there's no strain on the wheel at this point so it's not really an issue but when you do it at home please do it please go cross cross it out please do it I can't stress it enough don't forget it don't forget to do it really so while I oh wait I should have shown you that oh well I'll show you this one again one, two, three, four, five. What's up here? Ah, uh, your disc is gone. When you take the bolts out, it doesn't have to be in order. Just don't lose them. Don't ever lose them okay so the brake caliper it's mostly this is quite realistic it's mostly stuck with two big bolts mm, you really need some strength to get these out on the back and then you can take it right off so the disc it's mostly one bolt somewhere about 
air that holds it in place and obviously the ones the bolts that go on the wheel a new brake disc with used pads please don't don't ever do this don't ever do this and a wheel back on one two three four and five now there is a different way of doing that I'll show you in a second when I'm done with this one uh, all right so on the top here mostly is the the, the brake fluid hose don't con don't ever disconnect that you will have to go to a garage to have it fixed then you can't just put it back because of air and just just don't It won't break, it won't stop you. So, getting them back, getting this back. All right. So, the other little technique that I see that happens a lot in garages is this one one, two, three four five just it doesn't matter just as long as you don't go like one two three because then this t this part is all tight and if there's a little bit of dirt under here you go here then this part bends over now in the bigger scheme of things that's not gonna happen doesn't happen very often but if it does happen it's not a nice drive home and we're done so for that i think that's enough for today i'll like grind grind out the game a little bit more for you guys for next week and i may get i may get into a little bit more advanced stuff well, a little bit more advanced, uh, not really. I'll get into the suspension system and, uh, and the engine, maybe a little bit. So, until then, see ya! Asking all our questions, answers we